What's going on guys, Coach Vic here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about keeping the head down, why big leaguers do it, why you should do it, and why you should implement it into your training sessions. Let's get into it. What's going on guys, Coach Vic here. Welcome to the video. Uh, today's uh, drill is going to be the head down drill. Now, it's not so much a drill, it is a tip that you can apply to any drill that you are doing uh, at any point in time. This is a big one, I, I guess call it old school, call it old fashioned, but I'm a firm believer in the fact of keeping the head down through contact. Now, surprisingly, well, not surprisingly, I hear people debating this. I mean, even Aaron Judge's uh, hitting coach trolled me for this very thing. I mean, this post right here with Miguel Cabrera and was told that I should watch what he should do in an actual game as if if he is not keeping his head down. And then I replied with this image right here. Uh, and I told him that I do pay attention to what they do in games, but almost even more important than what they do in games, I focus on what MLB players, the best in the world, what they do when they are training, what their process is, because we got to remember here. Yes, we want the results that the MLB players are getting. We want the mechanics, we want the movements, right? We want the results. But what's even more important is how do we get there? Like, I wanna go to the moon. Yeah, that'd be great. How the heck am I gonna get there? More important than me wanting to go to the moon or actually even being on the moon itself is me figuring out how I'm actually gonna get there. You'll hear people talk about it in different ways for different reasons why you should keep your head down. You'll hear coaches and parents yelling it from the stands and the dugout during your games. The most common, the most obvious reason you think that keeping the head down is keeping you watching the ball, keeping your eyes on the ball. And again, that, that, is, that is absolutely true. But what happens is at a certain point, once you actually start your swing, that last 10, say 15 feet or so, we don't really see the ball very well. It becomes more of a blur, okay? And so what our brain is trying to do is fill in the gap. We see the picture we calculate, you know, our brain does it for us. We're not actually that smart. Our brain calculates the, the speed, the distance, the travel, the rate at which it is traveling. We pick a brake, spin, uh, shape, all kinds of different things to be able to determine or make our best calculated guess as to where that ball is going to be by the time it gets to my contact point. So that last 10, 15 feet, or let's just say roughly a third of the way, right, the last third of the way to the, to the plate, we're not actually seeing the ball all too well, okay? But I like to think about the head down is because, of course, see the ball first, of course, but then also because if my head stays down, it keeps my body turning through the ball with direction, okay? So it helps me maintain direction. Um, and so you'll see guys, you'll see Miguel, Miguel Cabrera, I mean, countless players. It's, count, it's funny that somebody such as Aaron Judge's hitting coach could actually argue this and think that I'm, I'm harming young players by telling them to keep their head down. Absolutely outrageous. So keeping my head down is going to allow for my rotation to stay on plane and through the ball. If my head starts to come up, say I track it the two thirds of the way, I say, yes, I'm going after this pitch. And then as I start to swing, my head starts to go. If my head starts to go, now my shoulders can start to go as well. If my head can stay down as if I'm tracking it all the way to the bat and I'm watching it leave the bat, even though we're not really doing, it's a blur. You're not gonna be able to actually see it. It's too fast for us to actually see it, but you can have your eyes in that spot. So if that is the case, if you're able to track it all the way, head stays down, you're able to work through the ball and extend through. Even if I were to hit it, if my head was starting to come off, I could still hit the ball pretty well, absolutely. But I might, it's still pulling me a little bit toward the left side toward, or toward pull side. Okay, so I like to have, especially in drills, you'll see guys like Nelson Cruz in particular. I love watching Nelson Cruz do his hitting drills. How every, boom, every drill is just, boom, head down on it every single time. And he even says it in one of his clips, I've posted this on, on, on the gram a few times, 
is where he's doing every drill that he does is all about keeping the head here, keeping his eyes on it, keeping his body, his direction working through the ball. And so that's the biggest key with the head down that I think even over seeing the ball, because of course you're gonna be looking out there, but it's that last little bit of way where we can start, our head can start to turn and now the shoulders can start to peel off and now you're peeling off the ball, right? Where our head goes, our shoulders will follow and if our shoulders go that way, our bat's gonna go that way also. If the pitch is inside, well then there's gonna be more of an opening up. Sure, you're gonna start to come open because the pitch, the location requires it. But even then, I argue you could still work to stay down through it with the head, thus giving you good direction, being able to stay inside the baseball and backspin balls with authority. Again, apply this head down tip into any and every drill that you do. Uh, it's almost like it's a non-negotiable. Every single drill, I want my players to, boom, head stays right there. Boom, head stays right there. Boom, head stays right there. So here's the mental skill that is gonna go along with this head down tip, okay? And that is, is the process over outcome. Oftentimes what I see is that hitters are trying to look up in anticipation of seeing the ball fly, seeing the ball travel. And this is where it can be thinking about the result, but maybe it's the result is a little bit too big, right? Maybe it doesn't have good direction. So you're thinking kinda, I'm trying to lift a pull side. If you're trying to lift the pull side, as soon as you start your swing, you're almost already, at least this is the way it looks and the way that, uh, you know, from my experience as a hitter, when I get a little big, a little pull happy, <clears throat> I want to see the ball go without actually making sure that I'm staying through the ball and focusing on good quality contact first. So if you're a young player or any age group for that matter, Keeping your head down during your training sessions helps you stay focused on the process and, so, and less on the outcome. Uh, the outcome, we want to use it as feedback, as information. So if I roll a ball over, I'm not gonna say that, in, you know, but I kept my head down, that I did everything correct. That's not true. I'm gonna use the feedback and how it felt off the bat, or if you're with a coach or a friend, if you literally don't see the ball because you're keeping your head down here, I argue you're gonna have a pretty good idea when you hit a ball poorly, even when your head is down. If anything, that trains yourself to kind of pay attention to the, how the contact feels off the bat. So that's gonna be a benefit. But again, using the feedback from the poor result in order to adjust your process. But meanwhile, your head stays down the entire time. Okay, and this allows for a more repeatable, more repetitive swing over and over because again, that is the key. Can we not only have a good swing, but can we repeat the swing over and over again and under pressure? Once we get into games, are we able to reproduce the quality swings in the cage out in the game? And that is usually the biggest issue with most players is to translate quality of the cage practice sessions into games. Check out my uh, a video I did recently, a practice versus games, and I go through a few tips and a few reasons why we struggle to translate practice to games. Be sure to check that out. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.